Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you are. Welcome to Parashara Jyotisha Conference of America webinar for January 3rd, 2021, with Sarbani Rath, um, giving a second uh, look at Bhakti Yoga. She's going to look at some charts um, and, um, and discuss the deities associated with the fifth house. And with that, I would ask you to um, put your questions in the question box. We'll get to them later. Don't put them in chat, just put them in question, please. And I will um, introduce our wonderful Sarbani Roth. Thank you, Deborah. And uh, good evening, uh, everybody. So uh, today, uh, I'm going to continue from where I left off uh, the last time, where I, we talked about, we defined what bhakti was and how bhakti was manifested in the fifth house and uh, what it meant, what were the nuances of the fifth house. And now I will continue from that and we are going to identify the devatas. Now that we have, uh, you know, identified that the fifth house is a reflection of the ninth house and that's where the bhakti manifests and that it is also chitta bhava and so it's a very delicate bhava and uh, so why does mantras indicated over there in the fifth house are so very very important so we are going to continue with that and then maybe identify some of these parts of bhakti in a few horoscopes just to give you an idea how we go about it okay so just start with the name of the guru. <clears throat> Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave Nama. Om Gurave. Om Gurave Nama. 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 Okay, Sarbani Thank you for this little uh, Ketu glitch. Uh, so, Om Gurabe Nama. So, as I said, that uh, this is where we stop. The slide that I have here right now, which says the fifth house. Can everybody see that, uh, whether in a small form or a big form? Yes. Okay. So, this is where we had stopped. And uh, we had said that how the fifth house is actually Bhavad Bhava or a reflection of the ninth house. So when the knowledge of the dharma is digested by Bhavad Bhavam, it is reflected in the fifth house. And then we also said how the fifth house is a very delicate house because it's Chitta Bhava. And we defined what the Chitta is, which is a confluence between the Dhi and the Manas uh, coming together over there. And we also said that where the Panchendriyas were concerned, it represented the tongue or the Rasana. And because rasana means taste or the rasas or the juices. So fifth house is a lot to do with emotions. That is why the expression of the reflected bhakti over there, uh, reflected uh, sort of spiritual knowledge over there gets expressed in terms of bhakti. And that is why also at the material level, we have the, uh, love affairs, etc., that we also see from the fifth house. So from there, then we said, that no wonder that the great Jyotish texts have said that the Yantha Mantra and all that is divine is to be seen from the fifth power. All right, this is actually a shloka from Parashara, which says, Yantra Mantra Tatha Vidhyam. So the first thing that he says is that from the fifth house, we are seeing Yantra, Mantra, and Vidya, Buddhi. And then, you know, Putra comes much later, the child. Uh, concept of the child comes much later. And this is there across uh, the uh, Jyotish text. 
And so this fifth house needs to be kept purified and cleansed continuously because we said this is chitta bhava and the chitta needs to be blemish free. All right. I said, what is the chitta? But the chitta is the interface between the manas and the soul and the dhi as well. It's very, very delicate. So the devatas, which are indicated by the grahas in this bhava, has the task of purifying those grahas so that they do not dirty the chitta. For example, if you have a son in the fifth house, uh, then, you know, the devata represented by son in that bhava has, you just don't do the mantra of that devata or the sadhana of that devata just uh, for, you know, the sake of worship or remedy or sadhana, but it is at the same time, it is purifying that graha, it's purifying that bhava that, okay, you can say that I have Surya in the fifth house, so I'm very naturally attracted to either Surya or Shiva, etc., or to Agni. I'm very, very attracted because Chitta Bhava is to do with affections of the heart, the emotions of the heart. The tongue is over there, it is Rasana, that which I'm attracted to, I really like it. So, you know, doing mantra of that is very important. It is Mantra Bhava. But the real task of that Graha would be actually to purify that bhava, to make the chitta blemish free. Because the chitta really has to be pure and blemish free. Otherwise, if the chitta gets damaged, then a lot of problem comes in. Whereas, you know, there are aberrations of the mind, uh, there can be diseases of the mind, there can be, uh, you know, to the extent you can have madness over there, all kinds of things. Everything is from this bhava. So, if I say that there is Surya over there and I can say, oh, Agni is a Devata of Surya, should I worship Agni? No. Because in Parashara scheme, for Surya, Agni is the Adi Devata. Those who have studied Parashara will know this. Agni is the Adi Devata and Shiva is the Pratyadi Devata. Now, what is the difference? Adi Devata is that we approach the Devata for lesser matters. He's at a lesser level, something more like a a district court judge, right? Where Pratyadi Devata is like a federal court judge, a Supreme Court judge. So I would like to go to the highest. You need the higher form of Devata. Only he can do this purification of Chitta. So just worshipping Agni, who's more like a Tattva Devata, is not going to help me. Similarly for Chandra, for Moon, the Adi Devata is Jaladevi, water or Apas. Just worshipping her is not going to help me. I need to go beyond the tattva. I need to go who's the controller of that tattva. The Pratyadi Devata is Gauri or Durga or the Durga in any of her forms. So if I have moon over there, I should be worshipping Durga. Or, or if I have sun over there, I should be worshipping Shiva because only then uh, I can keep that purified and cleansed. And as I said, there would be a natural attraction to this Devatas, okay? Now what we're going to do is examine Parashara, Jataka Parijata, Jataka Tattva, Shukanadi, Hora Vigyana, Rahasyam and many other texts, etc. They have all given very elaborate descriptions of this Devatas concerning to the fifth bhava. So if you ever wondered why are they all talking about the fifth bhava? Why are they saying fifth bhava is mantra bhava? You know, that was the question I started with last time. Why is it the mantra bhava? It is because of these reasons. And that is why the planets over there are very important. And that is why all these texts, and apart from the ones I've mentioned, other texts as well, have gone into elaborate discussions about who the devata in the fifth bhava represents. We in our parampara have a scheme, but you know, let's examine this. And this is going to roughly the model, roughly it is, uh, you know, similar with a little bit one or two discrepancies. Okay. So, fifth house related devata worships is aimed towards this cleansing. And this indicates that we need to worship higher forms of the devata. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, one minute.
right. So now the Prashna Marga. I mentioned the other books to you. Now the Prashna Marga has also associated madness with this house and has recommended Japa and Homa as remedies. Japa is chanting, as you know, and Homa is offering fire sacrifices. Why has he done that? He says that this becomes very prominent when there is a malefic in the fifth house or the conjunct or the fifth lord is conjoined a malefic planet or the fifth lord is debilitated or the fifth lord is an enemy's house or the fifth lord is combust or the fifth lord is having any dosha. For example, it is in a Krura Shishti Amsha or it is aspected by malefics. In all these conditions, the he gets totally destroyed. And I bring back your memory once again, where we were talking and we said that he is not only seen from Pakalagna or Lagna, but it is also in the fifth house. It is not that the fifth house in his very pure form, but as I said that over there, the fifth house is Chitta, which is connecting the Dhi with the Manas. So all the Manas and Dhi and the Atma, they're all getting a connectivity in the Chitta. That is why this concept of Chitta is very special and which is there in the fifth house, okay? And that is why it is such a delicate house. So here to keep it clean and blemish-free, the mantras or the sadhanas associated by devatas are very necessary. And if there are afflictions over there, it will show afflictions in the chitta and it can show mental aberrations. And Prashna Marga has gone and actually said that, that we, we can say with clarity that there is madness in the fifth house. And this madness can happen or this kind of aberrations can happen when we have malefic planets in the fifth house. I mean, now I wouldn't want you to say, oh, I have a malefic planet in my fifth house and I'm not mad. No, it's not like that. But is, he's just giving us an idea how it is that any kind of maleficence, affliction, aberration in the fifth house causes a mental aberration. So what are the conditions? We have malefic in the fifth house. Or secondly, if the fifth lord is with a malefic, or thirdly, if the fifth lord is debilitated, or fifthly, if the fifth lord is an enemy's house, sixthly, if a fifth lord is combust, seventh, if the fifth lord has a dosha, eighth, if it is in a Krura Shashti Amsha, ninth, if it is aspected by malefics. I mean, I would consider, con you know, even a combustion as a very, very important dosha, because uh, in combustion, what happens, a graha has come very close to the sun, and when it has come very close to the sun, uh, it gets completely burned. Just the way when we have a candle and a moth or a butterfly or even a finger goes very close to the flame, it can get completely burned. It can get singed. In a similar manner, when a planet comes within a certain distance of the sun, it gets completely burned and then there's nothing left of it. It's like a dry piece of barbecued, you know, barbecued thingy. So, uh, we are not then, uh, you know, the, it's, it loses its karakatwa and it becomes a malefic little object hanging around a horoscope and it gives us huge amounts of suffering. So fifth house combustion is not something that we are going to uh, like. And they say that it is worst if the fifth, fifth house is devoid of any kind of benefit aspect or association. Any benefit aspect or association on the fifth house is very, 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 very welcome. I can say I have Venus and Rahu in the fifth house and it has the Shri of Shani Ketu, but it has Rashi Rishti also of like a Chandra and a Guru and a Mercury. So I should enhance those uh, benefic influences. Uh, Venus's presence right there in Cancer uh, tells me that I should worship a female deity. And when I identify the female deity and worship the female deity, then that's very, very good for me. Now, if there is an association of Shani, Burik, or Rahu, then it says there is memory loss. Association of Saturn with the fifth house and the Lagna, it's considered really averse for the proper functioning of one's intelligence. And they said mantras can hugely contribute in protecting the mind in such a case. So if you have Saturn associated with the fifth house in any way, and as I was actually preparing the slide for all of you, I realized I had Saturn having Grahadishti, the seventh house from my fifth, uh, I mean, it's in the eleventh house. And I said, no wonder, you know, I'm having memory losses. And I also realized that meditation and mantras help that very well. So maybe it's to do with this. And, you know, I didn't pay attention to that. So what 
Prashna Marga is telling us that if there is this association of Shani with the fifth house, you can be prone to memory loss, but that can be very easily rectified with mantras, this, uh, this situation, okay? Now, Parashara has given us certain principles, okay? These principles are very, very important, and it's on the basis of this principle that we study all the other, uh, uh, you know, inputs given by other authors. So he has said that if the fifth house is a masculine sign, okay, that's the important thing, a masculine sign affected by or conjunct a masculine planet, then the person will desire to worship male deities. And that if the sun is feminine, sign is feminine, and associated or aspected by female planets, then the desire to worship female deities will be very strong. So here he is telling us to look at the sign. Is the sign masculine or feminine? All right. And then what about the grahas? The grahas placed over there, is it masculine or feminine? What about the grahas aspecting? Is it masculine or feminine? So we can have, of course, a combination of both, and then we, uh, you know, take a call on that. But largely what he's saying, if it is predominantly masculine, you would be attracted to worship masculine deities. And if it is predominantly feminine, you would be attracted to worship feminine deities. So now if the fifth house is an odd sign, and the fifth lord is in an odd sign, and the fifth house is related to a male planet, then one will worship a male deity. This is a further fine-tuning of it. The odd signs are like male energy, right? Odd signs are male signs. So he's saying that again, that if the odds, if fifth house is in an odd sign and the fifth lord is placed in an odd sign and the house is related to a male graha, then again, the tendency would be to worship a male deity. And if there is a dual sign associated with a female planet, then you tend to worship a female deity, okay? Next, if there are benefits associating or aspecting the fifth house, then the native worships Satvik Devatas and follows his dharma like a sadhu. And if the association of malefics, that the inclination is to veer towards the lesser deities, spirits, and departed souls. Now, this is a very, very important uh, factor. We don't want malefics in the fifth house because malefics in the fifth house will actually affect our chitta. But if there are malefics in the fifth house, then the tendency, the attraction is towards lesser deities, attraction towards tantric practices, attraction towards spirits and worshipping pretas and departed souls and lesser deities, that attraction is there, very deep, whether people admit it or not. Whereas if there are benefic planets associated with the fifth house or aspecting the fifth house, then the natives will be worshipping sattvic devatas, and he will follow his dharma with a tenacity, with a perseverance, just like a sadhu. So we got certain two, three different concepts which Parashara gives us. And one is that if the sign is masculine, all right, if the planet is masculine, then the subject will be uh, attracted towards male deities. And overall, if the sign, and when we are talking about sign, we are talking about the sign of the fifth house. And if that is feminine, and it is aspected uh, or associated with female palace, then it will be attraction towards female deities. So one is with this. The other is also to do with male and female, where it is saying that if the fifth house is an odd sign, and the fifth lord is also in an odd sign, and the fifth house is related to a male planet, then again the attraction will be towards a male deity. And then whether it's an even or a dual sign, and the association is with female planet, then the attraction will be towards a female deity. And the third thing that he tells us is that association of benefits and malefics. If benefits are associated, then of course the attraction will be to worshipping sattvic devatas, a sattvic method of worship, okay, following the dharma very uh, in a sattvic manner. Whereas malefics will show the tendency to veer towards lesser deities and tantric practices and to spirits, etc. All right. Now, after learning that, you see, now I've made these two tables for you. And this is given one, the first one is given by Jataka Parijata, and the second one is given by Jataka Tattva. And again, see the detail that they are talking about 
about planets occupy or respecting fifth house. So Jataka Parijata has given for Sun, he's given us Surya. For Moon and Venus, he's given us Gauri or any female Devata. For Mangal, he's given us Kartikeya. For Buddha, he's given us Vishnu. For Jupiter, he's given us Shiva. And for Saturn, Rahu and Ketu, he has said other deities. Are we very clear? So Surya, Devi, Kartikeya, Vishnu and Shiva, he's given kind of outline the primary devatas out there. And for Saturn, Rahu and Ketu, he has said other deities. Now let us look at Jataka Tattva. Jataka Tattva is a very small book on Jyotish, but he also talks a lot about the fifth house and devatas associated with the fifth house. So Jataka Tattva has said for Sam Surya, but he's also given Shankara. Now, what does Shankara mean? Shankara means Shiva. Okay. Chandra, he's given Yakshini. Now, Yakshinis are lesser deities. All right. They're not even deities. You know, what you call demigods, Yakshinis are that. They are the Shaktis of the Yakshas. So here, actually, uh, because we are looking at uh, the higher form of the Devatas, Jataka Tattva did not really mean to, uh, for us to worship a demigod over here. He actually meant us to worship Durga out here because Durga is the chief of the Yakshinis. All right. So it's actually a Devi. Moon would be Durga. Here also you can see Moon is Gauri. All right. I've not given Parashara scheme to you, but I will say that to you. And it is very similar to this scheme. Then from Mangal, he's given Skanda. Again, even Jataka Parijata is also given Kartikya, as you can see. So Skanda and Kartikya are the same. And in extra, Jataka Tattva is given Bhairava. Wow. Mangal is a Rudra avatar, you know, Bhairava. And then for Mercury, very interestingly, he has given all deities. All right. Mercury represents a mixed bag and Mercury represents attraction to all deities and he's given this to us. Then Jupiter, very interestingly, has given a female deity out here. You know, normally we don't see that and he has given Sharada. Do you know who Sharada is? Sharada is a form of Saraswati. Very high form of Saraswati is called Sharada. She's also called Bharati. So Sharada is given over here. That is Sharada is also Saraswati and Sharada forms a link to Tara, which is also associated with Jupiter. But it is very interesting that he has given a female deity association with Jupiter, which normally doesn't happen. And for Venus too, if you see, he has given Durga. Okay, normally uh, for Venus, um, I mean, here Jataka Parijata says that for Moon and Venus is Gauri, or that is Parvati or any female deity. And he is given Durga, whereas many other uh, sort of texts, they often say, no, no, Venus is Lakshmi. So you can see he has said Venus is Durga. You can see that actually even Jataka Parijata is also saying Venus is Durga, right? They've given Durga. So here you can say it is really a similarity. Moon and Venus, Jataka Tattva saying Durga, and so is Jataka Parijata. Gauri is just, uh, you know, Durga herself. You know, she has many names. Gauri, Parvati, Uma, they are all Durga. So they're both giving Durga for Moon and Venus. So which means Durga or any of her forms. All right. And for Saturn, he has given spirits ghosts. He's very clear. If Saturn is there, spirits and ghosts, that, that, that is what the native will worship. And then for Rahu, he has given something called Parapindaka. This is kind of, Parapindaka means that somebody, uh, you know, it's like a spirit, somebody who's died and you're worshipping that dead spirit. Okay. Right. So I think I've already said this to you that like the Jataka Parijata, Jataka Tattva also states that moon and Venus associated with the fifth house, the subject would be have a preference for female deity. I should not even say female deity, but I should say Durga. I should make this correction. He has really mentioned Durga for moon and Venus. All right. And he has made another comment. He has said, and this, this point is also made by Parashara. He has said that if the fourth Lord is in the fifth house, the native shall be a devotee of Vishnu. And this is also a dictum of Parashara. So you can see 
that lot of these Jataka Tattvas are much lesser text, and you can see they have drawn from Parashar over here. So my whole purpose of showing all this to you is that you can see that how all the astrologers have really spent time on talking about fifth house and the path of sadhana, the path of bhakti. Really, we are not really talking about only deity worship here. You know, if you recall to the first part of my talk, which was done on 20th December, uh, we are really talking about the path of bhakti. So if there is a sun, if there is moon and Venus associated with the fifth house or in the fifth house or dominating the fifth house, definitely the bhakti parga or the path of bhakti of the native shall be Devi. They will be Devi Upasaks, Devi, Devi Sadhaks. Very, very hard for Devi Upasana will be there in those people. If the sun is there, there will be hard for Upasaks of either the Shaiva tradition, Surya or Shiva himself. The Gayatri Mantra shall run strong in that person. And if Mercury is over there, then very strong the Vishnu or Narayan would be the Krishna path, would be the very strong path over there. All right. And then this association with the fourth and the fifth house is made. It is made by Parashara and it is followed by Jataka Tattva that it will show that they will be devotees of Vishnu. Jataka Tattva has also given us some extra points. He has said that if the 12th Lord is in the second house, all right, or the eighth house, and it is related to the fifth Lord, then the subject's devotion will be towards Sattvic deities. Okay, we shall uh, look at all these points in a few charts soon enough to understand. I'm going to share another text with you, okay? Because my whole purpose is to show up, see how all these Jyotishis, the great Jyotish texts have looked upon, uh, you know, our tradition. So here you can see there are some points from the Shukanadi. The Shukanadi, it's one of the Nadis, it's, it has said that if the fifth Lord occupies the sign of Leo and is aspected by the sun, one will meditate upon the Panchakshari Mantra and attain the blessings of Shiva. So here he's talking about the fifth Lord and not the fifth house itself. So he's saying if the fifth Lord is in Leo and is aspected by Surya, then the Panchakshari Mantra of Namah Shivaya will run in the person and the person shall be blessed with the blessings of Shiva. All right, see the association with the, uh, with the sign and the masculine planet and the association with Surya so as I said that, where Surya is concerned, even Parashara has told us that the Pratyadi Devata of Surya is Shiva. So normally we look at Shiva straight away when Sun is associated with the fifth house. Now, if the moon is in the fifth house and the fifth Lord is with Mangal, subject will worship Kartikeya. So this is a very interesting thing. Even if the moon is in the fifth house, but he says if fifth Lord is conjoined Mangal, that person will be worshipping Kartikeya. So he's saying that, that the association of the fifth lord with Mars will make him a worshipper of Kartikeya. Then he has said if it's the fifth lord is in the sign of Mercury, then while Mercury is in the fifth house, or the fifth house is aspected by Mercury, the subject will worship Mahavishnu. So we can see Shukanari has laid a lot of stress on the fifth lord. All right? His set stress is on the fifth lord, the association of other planets with the fifth lord and as well as with some connection with the fifth house. So Mercury is showing Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is the main big form of Vishnu, the Virata Rupa. Okay. And then he has said that if Jupiter is in the fifth house and the fifth lord is in Virgo, the subject will worship Gauri. So this is also very interesting. Just like the previous uh, Jataka Tattva we saw, uh, Shukanari has also associated uh, Jupiter with the divine Mathpar. It's very interesting, but only if there is an association with Virgo. And here he said that if the fifth lord and the Lagna lord are an inimical sign, subject will be an atheist. So this is a little bit of an extra touch given to us by the Shukanari, which I thought that I would share with you all. Now, this is very interesting. This is from Prashna Marga. And, you know, we in our parampara follow this a lot. We really follow this. And here he has given a further uh, sort of differentiation for us to identify the deity. He has said that the sun in all signs is Shiva, but 
in the first Reshkan of dual science is Kartikya and the second Reshkan of dual science is Ganesha. Okay, that's a very interesting point. And the moon, yes, it is the divine mother. So the moon is a very strong moon. It would be Durga. If the moon is weak, like it's debilitated or in malefic signs, it would be Bhadrakali. And if it is weak and in Martian signs, it would be Chamundi, the dark attributes. So this is something that we actually really follow. So moon with Mars, that's why it gives us Chamunda very easily. So did you get it? A strong moon is Durga and a weak moon is Bhadrakali. Bhadra Kali means Bhadra Kali, forms of Kali, whatever. And if it's a weak moon in a Martian sign, then it's form of Chamunda or Chandi. Okay, a very dark warrior goddess out there. Now, where Mangal is concerned, he has said odd signs is Kartikeya and Bhairava. Now, we saw this earlier also. Somebody else had also mentioned, I think Jataka Tattva had also mentioned Bhairava. Why did he, why are they mentioning Bhairava? Mars is also, as I said, is kind of a Rudra Vata. It's a Rudra form. So Bhairava is that kind of energy. So Bhairava is associated with Mangal over there. And when in even signs, it is Chamundi or Bhadrakali. Because why has it differentiated between odd signs and even signs? Odd signs are male energy, remember. And even signs are female energy. So when Mangal is an odd sign, it's giving the, or the male masculine warrior energy. And what is the masculine warrior energy? The masculine warrior energy is that Kartikeya, the general in chief of the Devasena. And it is also Bhairava, okay? Whereas even signs, which are female signs, feminine signs, is giving you more feminine deities. So here he's saying that Mars's association with female signs is going to give you Chamundi and Chamunda and this kind, like sort of more aggressive deities. And here we come to Mercury. And Mercury is Vishnu Avatar in all movable signs and in all dual signs. But if it is in the first and second Rishkan of a fixed sign, specifically, it is Krishna. And if it is in the third Rishkan of a fixed sign, specifically, it is Vishnu. Okay? And uh, definitely, Parashara tells us that Vishnu is the Adi Devata of Mercury and Narayan is the Pratyadi Devata. Germany also tells us Narayan. So about Mercury, there seems not to be any doubt amongst all the texts that we see. It is Vishnu, Vishnu Avatar, Narayana. Okay. Prashnamarga also tells us that Jupiter represents divinity in our horoscope. Wherever Jupiter is, there is divinity. He has said it very clearly. And then he also said that Jupiter can represent Mahavishnu and that the exact nature and form changes according to the sign it is placed in and the planets associated with it. But here also let me add, add for you, we in Parampara following Jaimini out here, we say that it can be either Mahavishnu or it can be Sadashiva. So it is the very high form of the male deity, Mahavishnu or Sadashiva. Who is Mahavishnu? Like for example, Jagannath is Mahavishnu. Okay, and then we have Sadashiva. Sadashiva is a very, very high form of Shiva, all right, who is completely in permanent dhyana. He is an Akasha and the symbolism and the embodiment of Akasha Tattva. So that Sadashiva, Sadashiva means eternally and always auspicious, okay, he is the Omkara. So that Sadashiva and Mahavishnu is represented by Jupiter. So we need to determine whether Jupiter is Mahavishnu or Sadashiva. And Jupiter, of course, can also represent Guru in a very, very high form. Remember that Shiva is the Parameshti Guru himself, all right? So uh, we need to uh, you know, make a distinction. So there is a distinction between Shiva as shown by Surya and Shiva as shown by Jupiter. Shiva, as so shown by Surya, is the all-pervading Shiva as we worship him. But Shiva, as shown by Jupiter, is Sada Shiva, that pure Tattva Rupa, the pure Omkara, whom we can't reach, who's actually not manifested. That is the Sada Shiva of Jupiter. Okay. And similarly with Vishnu, when we say Mahavishnu, we are uh, really saying that very high Rupa of Vishnu is out here, like Jagannath or Venkateshwara, very high Mahavishnu Rupa is out there and not just Mercury Rupa. So there would be a distinction when we are saying Vishnu in 
through Mercury and when we are seeing Vishnu through Jupiter. And similarly, there is a distinction when we are seeing Shiva through Surya and when we are seeing Shiva through Jupiter. So for all those who are especially Westerners, do not get confused. It's actually Shiva is the same, but it's just a very, very different, very high level. Okay. Then for Venus, he has said very clearly it is Annapurneshwari or Lakshmi. And by Annapurneshwari, let me add something else to you. Prashna Marga elsewhere has said that Venus in Cancer is actually the form of Devi Annapurna. That is why when people have Venus and Cancer in the fifth house or you know in uh, somewhere related to the Karakamsha, we always advocate Annapurna mantra. And for Saturn, he has said Shashta or Kiraratha. Shashta is somebody who were actually like the teacher of Shastra out there. And for Rahu, he has said Sarpa. Very clearly, he said Sarpa is the Devata that is worshipped. Parashara has given some other forms also. You remember that we talked about Jataka Tattva and Jataka Tattva mentioned this. That if the fourth lord is associated with the fifth house, like fourth lord is in the fifth house together, maybe with the fifth lord, or even just the presence of the fourth lord in the fifth house, the subject will be devoted to Vishnu because there is a connection with the Rid chakra out there. All right, because in the Rid Padma, in the Anahata, who sits but Narayan and Lakshmi sits. So the devotion, if there is a connection with the fourth house, devotion is there. So fourth lord in the fifth, fifth lord in the fourth would make you a Vishnu Bhakta, you will follow the Vishnu Marga. Maybe you are worshipping something else, but you are unabashedly attracted to Vishnu or any of his forms. So this uh, point is also given by Jataka Tattva. Uh, if the fifth lord is in the seventh, we uh, learn in the Parampara, fifth lord is in the seventh, makes you a Shaivite, and you are in the Shaiva path. And also, uh, Parashara has given us that he would have the ability to assimilate the knowledge of all religions. All right, a Sarva Dharva Samanvita has the ability to assimilate the knowledge of all religions. Then if the 11th Lord is in the fifth house, he will also be a very religious person. And if the 12th Lord is in the fifth house, he will visit shrines in order to beget a child. All right, so these are a lot of, you can see connections with fifth house. So it's not just planets in the fifth house. He's so many other shlokas, so many other principles are drawn by these rishis where they are saying that how you can be a very spiritual person, how you can, will be uh, doing pilgrimages, 11th Lord in the fifth, 12th Lord in the fifth, the lords of other houses in the fifth are also giving you a certain uh, directions towards this. So see the huge importance given by uh, the our uh, uh, you know jyotishis our rishis uh, to this now before we uh, look into the charts i'm going to actually uh, mention something else to you since we said it is the chitta bhava and brahman over there are going to be cleansing and making our mind and chitta more and more blemish free so similarly malefics over there and afflictions over there can actually turn our mind, will not actually make our minds blemish free, but make our chitta more blemished, isn't it? Malefics associated with fifth house, a lot of afflictions associated with fifth house will make our chitta more uh, with blemish. It will endow a lot of blemishes to it, and it will turn the person more towards tantric mantras. And when the person turns towards tantric mantras because of malefics in fifth house, then, uh, you know, the entire mind gets more and more debilitated and afflicted. It can call aberrations to the mind. All right. And the aberrations can be so severe that you can have troubles from different sources and it can even cause you schizophrenia. It can even cause you madness. Even benefits of weak, debilitated, retrograde, or very severely afflicted can often give these results and the conditions of a curse from a past life, for example. 
So now during the periods of such afflicted benefit planets, great evil will befall and the subject may be start dabbling in tantra, mantra or black magic. And this will cause further suffering as such mantras allow evil thoughts to continue in the mind. So are you, are you following what I'm saying? So when you have such evil afflictions or malefic afflictions in the fifth house, during the dasha period of those planets, you will veer towards practices which are related to black magic or dabble in tantric mantras, your interest will go over there. And as you dabble in black magic, and as you dabble in tantric mantras, they will affect your mind. See the point? They will affect the mind. Planets in the fifth house, depending what they are, the mantras you do of the planets in fifth house affect your mind and your chitta. It is a very, very important thing. Hence, malefics placed over there, if you're doing tantric mantras or dabbling in black magic, it will affect the mind, all right? And because it is affecting the mind, such evil thoughts or such negative thoughts, rather, will come to your mind and then such events will happen in your life, life in the periods of those planets. So this kind of uh, manifests uh, curses, which is often over there. What kind of afflictions can you get here? Look at this table. This is actually this uh, uh, piece which I'm sharing with you, this table which I'm sharing with you, this knowledge from our parampara specifically. So if the sun is over there, you can have trouble from government or superiors. If the moon is over there, then you'll have trouble from relatives, mother, or there will be some social ostracization. If Mangal is over there, you can tend to have cuts, wounds, accidents, or there can be severe anger issues. There can be wars or conflicts. If Mercury over there, then you can be prone to natural disasters like fall from heights or trees or uh, maybe uh, landslides or avalanches, you know, earthquakes. If Jupiter's over there, then there can be huge religious differences, you know, like communal violence and communal disharmony that is an afflicted Jupiter and there can also be fire hazards. Now if Venus is over there, very very understandable, trouble from the opposite sex, trouble in love life, trouble, trouble in relationships, trouble from the from men or women, I mean depending, trouble from the opposite sex, that's why I wrote. Lot of trouble, very like a very afflicted Venus associated with fifth house, huge trouble in relationships and love affairs. If Shani is over there, definitely there is trouble from dead spirits. If Rahu is over there, trouble from snakes, bondages, entrapment, and scandals. Ketu, trouble from snakes and mistakes. And this is specifically if these are really, really kind of causing afflictions out there, then this uh, uh, problem will be there. So Rahu, when we are saying trouble from snakes, it's Rahu will give scandals. Rahu will make you... Uh, entrapped you know maybe and if Rahu is with Venus in the fifth you can perhaps get entrapped in some relationship some illicit relationship maybe some bonded in some uh, you know uh, improper relationship that may lead to cause scandals and things like that okay so Ketu over there you can make mistakes and if Saturn is over there and afflicting the fifth house you can perhaps have trouble from dead spirits so Saturn over there or Rahu over there and if such people, I mean, and there's a lot of affliction around it and if such people then prone to do black magic or dabble in mantras related to tantric mantras or Saturn and Rahu, you are going to be activating those negative yogas, activating that energy in your mind in a very big way, okay? Uh, I will start with a horoscope uh, where this thing was there. This person, this native, um, he was uh, actually had a very good job as a civil servant in the government and things like that. And uh, you can see this is Kanya Lagna and you can see Jupiter is the Badhakesh and Jupiter is debilitated in the fifth house and it is Vakri. So what did the note say that even if a benefit planet is afflicted or weak in the fifth house, like it is retrograde or debilitated, then it is definitely going to give you negative results, all right? And in this case, it's the Badakesh as well. So when it is the Badakesh, that means definitely this cause of, uh, you know, afflictions and black magic and wrong mantra comes in. So this person actually started dabbling in doing black magic. He started doing planchette. 
Planchet is, you know, where you have these Ouija boards. So in the Ouija board, you can actually uh, call the dead spirits and things like that. So he was actually uh, doing that. He was doing a lot of black magic, dark mantras, and got very interested in calling the dead spirits through the Ouija board and was doing planchets. So that's Badakesh Jupiter, debilitated, uh, Bakri, in the fifth house. Really very, very uh, afflicted over there. It is also having the Rashi Drishti of the Lord Shani, and it is having the uh, Graha Drishti of two natural malefics, that is, uh, you know, Surya, you can see Surya over here and Mangal. So both Surya and Mangal are actually doing uh, Graha Drishti over there. So that natural benefit, which is a Badakesh, which is debilitated, placed over there, it has the Graha Drishti of Mangal and Graha Drishti of Surya. So Graha Drishti of two planets, right, of malefic planets. So it is an afflicted benefit and it's also has Rashi Drishti of Shani, which is a very powerful Rashi Drishti because Shani is also the Lord of the fifth house. It is associated with Venus and Mercury. You can see Mercury is the Lagna Lord and Venus is the second Lord. So speech, Mercury is also the natural Karaka for speech and Venus is also the second Lord associated with speech. So speech, that means that wrong mantras. He was uttering and saying wrong mantras, okay, uh, by which uh, these uh, this thing happens. And you can see also that Jupiter is the dispositor of Rahu. Okay, so the association, the total affliction on Guru is very, very complete. And when the Dasha of Jupiter came, this person became schizophrenic. So result, he had to give up his job. He gave up a very good job, a very brilliant man gave up his job. And he just dwelt in that schizophrenia till he completely lost his mind. The chitta got chitta just completely disappeared. You can see the moon is also there in the sixth house, completely disappeared. And he became completely banned. All right. This is a case how the fifth house is the controller of chitta bhava. All right. It is so, so delicate. Whereas a positive indication out there, and if you go in that path, it can completely take you to the bhakti marga. Are you seeing the whole, whole intricacy of? Uh, this bhava, okay. So here we can actually look at uh, this horoscope. Uh, this person is a great uh, devotee of uh, of Shiva. He's a Shiva upasa. You can see the fifth house is two grahas, sun and Venus straight away. Now, if you are going to follow Parashara's uh, dictums out here. The sign is Cancer. Okay, Cancer is a feminine sign. There is Venus also there, which is a feminine planet. But there is Surya out there. Okay, Surya over there is a masculine planet, and Surya is actually dominating out there over there. Surya is Bhatrikarika. Bhatrikarika represents the Guru. Hmm. Now uh, he is a very very great uh, devotee of Shiva, because we did discuss that Surya will show that uh, you know uh, is a worshipper of Shiva, both by Parashara and Jataka Tattva and Prashnamanga, and they've all told us how you are a worshipper of Shankara and Shiva out there. So he's a very great worshipper of Shiva, and the Gayatri Mantra also runs very strong in him. And how did he do the Gayatri Mantra? He got it from his, got, got initiated from the Gayatri Mantra from his paternal uncle, his father's elder brother, who also happens to be his guru. His Jyotish Guru, rather, uh, was his father's elder brother. So Surya is Bhratri Karaka, and he's a Meshalagna person. So from him, he received the Gayatri Mantra. And the Shiva is also the Kula Devata of the planet. So what we do when we see this, we also actually verify A with the Vamsha, and B, we also verify it with the Vimshamsha. When in all three charts, we see a very strong presence of that graha, then it really shows, yes, this person is really on that marga. See, if we talked about that this is the expression or the manifestation of bhakti will come through here and it will show in that path. So that means, Shiva means like Zeus, you know, like the supreme uh, single, uh, the spiritual father, like the holy father. That is what Surya actually shows out there. So Surya is very, very uh, dominating uh, planet out here. 
Now, uh, the Lord, the fifth Lord is moon and the moon is there in the sign Aquarius. And what have we learned about the moon going to a dark sign? Prashnamarga tells us that you would actually like deities who are slightly more of the darker attributes, meaning you would like more like Mahavidya or Kali. Moon is in the sign of Saturn, so you would like Kali. The moon is in the sign of Mars, like Prashnamarga tells us, you would like more Chandi or Chamunda forms. Okay, and in the sign of Saturn, you would like more Kali forms. So moon in uh, Kumbharashi, in the sign of uh, Saturn, the attraction is more towards um, uh, Kali. I can actually even differentiate further. If you see that there is a direct Rashi red Drishti with Mercury, so there is a moon Mercury yoga. Moon Mercury yoga is also known as a Sharada yoga. All right, now, if we say Kali, a form of Kali Tara, the Tara Mahavidya is more associated with the Saraswati form. Saraswati is also one form of Tara, is also one form of Saraswati. That lineage, Saraswati, Sharda, they are associated with Tara. And Tara is like Kali, is a form of Kali. So we can then say that moon in fifth Lord moon in a Saturnine sign his attraction will be towards the form of Kali. And I can push it further that there is a direct moon Mercury yoga. So maybe the form of Kali that he would like particularly is Tara. If I were to advise the native, I would say yes. And on top of that, you have Jupiter in its own sign in Lagna. So if the Shakti of the Lagna, then definitely Jupiter will also show Tara. So Tara Mahavidya, the presence of Tara Mahavidya is very strong. And the person tends to dream about Tara a lot. There's a huge connection with Kali and a huge connection with Tara Mahavidya in his life. But he is predominantly uh, the worshipper of uh, the bhakti, the attraction, uh, the love, uh, the entire, as we say, the river, the rasana of bhakti is actually there towards Shiva because Surya is dominating. Venus over there is combusted, okay? And Surya as Bhratvikaraka is dominating as a graha out there in the fifth house. Now, if you see Navamsha and if you want to see Ishta Devata, his Karakamsha is Virgo. And in the 12th from the Karakamsha, we have Mercury. Mercury will show who, but Mercury will show Vishnu and a form of Vishnu, which is more from his Kula because he is from that region. So the natural uh, Ishta is there as Jagannath. But his bhakti and his everything and his upasana is all related to Shiva, which is shown by Surya in the fifth house. Okay, so here we are seeing how the, where the bhakti is going. Now look at this chart. This is another horoscope of a Shiva bhakta, totally a Shaivai, total. Now you can see there are no planets in the fifth house. Okay, it's a dual sign, no planets. If I take the fifth Lord, which is Mercury, if I take Mercury, okay, there is Rahu also, but I'm taking Mercury. And then Mercury is with a bunch of other planets. And what are these planets? There is Lagna Lord Venus over there. And there is Jupiter over there. And then is Sun over there. Both Sun and Jupiter are going to show Shiva, right? Sun will show Shiva and Jupiter. We can also show Sadashiva. He was such a, and you can see the association of Lagna Lord over here is a very crucial factor. Venus Lagna Lord is conjoined. This person's bhakti was so strong, he felt he was one with Shiva. He would go to the Jagannath temple and say Om Namah Shivaya very loudly because he saw only one Devata and that is Shiva. And he would have his own Shiva Linga in his house who was immersed in water and there he would walk early in the morning with huge rudrakshas in his uh, around his neck and he would have flowers in his hand and he would offer it to the shivalinga and nobody would dare come next to him his love for shiva was so so very pure he did not really ever veer ever have attraction ever have nazar ever saw anybody else other than him so to the fact that even to go to the uh, uh, Jagannath temple to a Krishna temple and inside the temple and say Om Namah Shivaya is absolutely the full crystallized manifestation of bhakti in the mark of Shiva out there. And why is that such a, uh, he always considered Shiva his father. He says, my father, my lord, 
would look after me always. That is the conjunction of the fifth lord with the lagna lord. The oneness with the deity. Bhakti has gone to such an extent that there's complete oneness with the deity. Very rare to see such kind of Shiva Bhakti. Okay? And yes, if you are asking a question, I can say that. As long as he's doing this Shiva worship and Shiva puja, his chitta will also be fine. His mind shall also be fine. Now see, this is an example of unadulterated Krishna Bhakti. This is the horoscope of Srila Prabhupada. And all of you know that he is an embodiment of Krishna Bhakti. Okay, to the extent that he gave up his marriage and life at an older age and took sannyas and he at, the, at his guru's behest came to a foreign land and a foreign country to construct 108 Krishna temples. And we have this huge ISKCON movement thanks only to him. It is his bhavadhara, it is his bhakti which is getting manifested to this extent. All right, again, if you see, no planets in the fifth house and the fifth lord is conjoined and exalted moon. Now, your question here might be, are we going to take it as a female planet because the planet it is conjoining is moon and it is exalted? No, we will take the sign is Mangal, uh, Aries, and the lord of the fifth house is Mangal. The sign and lord are both males and uh, we, will, we are going to take the male form of deity. So we will, the Mars is going to define male or female, not moon. Moon will show the nature of that male deity. Are you with me? Aries as the sign in the fifth house is a masculine sign. And the Lord over there is Mangal who's also very, very masculine. Mangal alone may have given you something like Kartikeya. Well, we do not really worship Kartikeya. So you may have been a worshiper of Hanuman or any other form. But Mars is here with the moon. And what has Prashnamarga told us? Mars with moon. Mars with moon, the male deity, here he becomes a devotee of Krishna. Because the moon is exalted over there. The moon exalted is in Taurus is Krishna. And uh, he becomes a great devotee of Krishna. And you can see that the dispositor over there, Venus, is also with Mercury, which shows that the particular form that he liked was Radha Krishna out here. Okay, uh, so this great devotion towards Krishna has come from that. So it is not directly shown by Mercury, but it is more shown by the conjunction of the fifth lord. Are you with me on this? The conjunction of the fifth lord and the conjunction of the fifth lord here is with exalted moon. And the dispositor of that Venus is with an exalted Mercury. Okay, so the blessing very strongly is that of Vishnu out here. Okay. I'm very sorry, there is really something. Um, Sarbani? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we yes. did get a message uh, from somebody um, from Chaitanya um, that if uh, to go to full screen mode, if the user use presenter mode is unchecked from PowerPoint, then full screen view will appear for the audience. He thinks full screen view is is on your laptop and presenter view um, is to the audience. I don't know if that so uncheck user use presenter view. Uncheck use presenter view. Yeah, see over there have... to the to the right of your cursor. Yeah, use presenter view. So I should uncheck that. Try try that and see if that works. Okay. And then this is the slide, Devi Bhakti. Uh, from a current slide, it does this work? Yes. It did? Yes. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry, I didn't see that note until just now, but... Um, so I, I also didn't know about job. it. Okay, he must be having a... Uh, whoever said this must be having a, a sort of a strong mood or something somewhere. 
Because well, they're going to talk about the divine mother. <laughs> maybe he can uh, um, write in and say, uh, ask another question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, we are towards, uh, towards the end of our presentation. So, to come back to the flow, here we are going to see a horoscope, which is going to show us uh, a Devi Bhakti. This was this lady was a well known actually a politician kind of a politician in India a long time ago, and you can see that the fifth house is Karka, feminine sign, and it's ruled by the moon, and the moon is present over there. So this should completely this is a very very uh, easy chart to say that this lady was an absolute devout of the divine mother. All right, she was such an absolute devout uh, devout follower of the Divine Mother, that she she's kind of a sadhu, she's called Sadhvi Rithambara. She started opening a lot of orphanages for girls uh, who are absolutely destitute or orphaned, and she opened many such homes. And she did it, and then she also had a little uh, kind of a little army, which she called Durga Vahini. Durga Vahini means like a Durga army. And she has this Durga army to which she wanted to actually go around and right wrongs. So this is the kind of work she did in politics. Of course, the politicians were not interested. So they recruited her thinking that she is in politics. But the kind of politics she wanted to do was this because she had this Durga Vahini. Of course, there was a lot of things that were circulated in the media that the Durga Vahini has done this and the Durga Vahini has done that. But no. I mean, Durga Vahini, just imagine naming her whole like a unit named after Durga. But she also opened a n number of orphanages for young girls, n number of homes for women and girls. That's what she loved doing. She did it more and more and more. She has huge number of them and they're all named after Durga. So it's like when you were also doing anything, this is strongly believed in our uh, Indian society that when you're doing for women, you're doing for girls or you're doing for uh, older women or young girls, you're actually doing for the divine mother. This is really very strongly inculcated uh, in the Indian psyche. So she did a huge amount of that. So you can see her bhakti was immense. I mean, you know, we can be critical of her politics and all that, but her bhakti, which we wanted to see that when there are very such strong presentations in the horoscope, then the bhakti can flow like a huge river. It can take any form to the extent that you are kind of uh, uh, sort of having a um, uh, kind of a whole army, which you are calling Durga Vahini and uh, having, you know, doing so much for women and uh, orphans and children. I mean, that was her main thing. She was kind of very obsessed with it. I'm not just mentioning there are many people who open orphanages or who have money and they open charities, but she actually, that was her main thing to have these homes for these destitute women and all that. That was the main thing. And she really got involved in that and she went on and on and created hundreds of homes all over the place. I think over hundred homes or something like that for women. So see the whole expression, the flow. She was a huge, huge worshiper of Durga. But the expression of that bhakti can take many, many different forms. Now, if we talk of Sri uh, Meera, then Meera completely actually did it with a union with the Lord, right? A huge union. She, she was completely and absolutely one with the Lord and a flu. That is called the true bhakti, which we had started with uh, last time. That uh, what is the nature of this bhakti? Uh, we had said that the bhakti yoga means a union. That is the union of this soul with the Paramatma. And that is something embodied by Sri Radhika and that is something embodied by Meera. And Meera dedicated her life to that. But for a lot of other people in the mundane field, as we are now seeing from the charts, that the deities which are shown over there and which are seen by us, and if you worship those deities, then you are actually, the more you are doing that, you're keeping the chitta cleansed, you're keeping the chitta pure, you're keeping the chitta blemish free. And hence that if you have negative afflictions over there, and then if you resort to negative mantras or dark black magic, you're unleashing certain dark energies in from your mind. And then, you know, you can even go right up to madness if that can be. So I would think that if you have a lot of negative 
combinations in the fifth house or in the chart, then we should actually do the sattvic mantras of those deities and we should make an effort to break those negative yogas that is there. You should see in the horoscope, maybe there is a Jupiter aspecting or something aspecting. What is the graha which is breaking the negative yogas over there? And if there's something breaking the negative yogas, then definitely uh, we should actually uh, do those mantras to break the negative impact of the grahas. But it's actually often very difficult because those grahas, what we really want that even if you have negative planets over there, we would definitely want the aspect of a benefic planet. The aspect of a benefic planet is minimally a very, very crucial thing for the fifth house. Now uh, we'll come to uh, one last chart and that is of, um, Right. Um, so we are going to end with uh, this thing of Satsri, our dear Satsri Khalsa. And here you can see it's Scorpio Lagna. In the fifth house, you can see that there are no grahas out here. And if we take the main ruler of the fifth house, that is fifth house is Jupiter. And Jupiter is there alone in the Lagna. Jupiter can show apart from Sadashiva or Mahavishnu, it shows the Guru, or the Guru in such very high forms. Remember when I talked to you about Sadashiva and Vishnu, I said it's a very, very high form. So here also, the Guru is a very, very high form. It is in the Lagna, and in when it is present in Lagna, this is the Bija for Lagna is Omkara. So she does the, her mantra, is she's the sixth sampradaya. So the guru is everything to her. And her mantra is Ekonkar Satnam. So with Ekonkar Satnam, she has run her whole life. And that is the blessing and the joy and the kripa of the guru that drips from here. Completely, you can see that the fifth lord is Lagna. So the union actually is very, very beautiful over there. Very, very beautiful union out there in the Lagna. There can be some doubts coming in because of some Rahu, Graha Drishti of Rahu. Otherwise, we do not see any uh, negative Graha Drishti of other malefics also over there. So the union with the self is very strong because it is placed in Lagna. Fifth Lord in Lagna, Lagna Lord in fifth house, fifth Lord and Lagna Lord together. If we take Ketu, Ketu is also the co-lord of her Lagna and the co-lord of fifth house. So Ketu is kind of a connecting thing, which is in the fifth house of you know, meditation and moksha and etc., which shows the very, very high level of spirituality of the person. So uh, the what she may not say, Scorpio Lagna doesn't say or reveal much, but what she does not say or reveal is the union that she has with a very high form, with Omkara or with Ek Omkara or Guru as Omkara, all right? In this case, everything merges. You see, at this level, you can say, Parameshti Guru Sadashiva is also Omkara. And this Guru at a very high level, at a Nirankara Rupa, is also Omkara. So there's no difference between Ek Omkar Satnam, Omkar, Om Namah Shiva, it's all one. It merges at that very high level, everything merges. So she is very much one with the Omkara, one with the Guru, and the Guru as Omkara in her. Very, very close, very close. And we don't, she doesn't reveal that, and we don't get to see it, okay? So uh, uh, this is the thing, and her, um, just one minute. I'm trying to move this around. Her Atma Karaka is also Jupiter, all right? Atma Karaka is also Jupiter, and uh, so it shows that there is a very, very strong spiritual level. Now, before ending, I would want to say one thing. Actually, Parashara has taken this whole concept of fifth house, and that if you are flowing in the Bhakti Mark of certain direction, he takes it uh, by examining the fifth from Karakamsha. So I'm not really going to be uh, talking about that here because uh, I know that many of you are uh, uh, not actually into, uh, I've not studied perhaps Karakamsha as yet, but for those of you who know Karakamsha and who studied Karakamsha, you know that the fifth house from Karakamsha because it's very important. And the mantras which are there in fifth house from Karakamsha, the devatas and deities which shows fifth house from Karakamsha is very important because then we are going more into our inner self and more into the directions of the soul. So 
we can take it up to that level. So Parashur has gone to that level. That's how important Fifth House is. So uh, with that, I will uh, end my presentation today, uh, Deborah. And uh, so I'd be uh, open to taking questions if there are any. Okay, great. Thank you. That was wonderful. And um, uh, oh, um, somebody is asking to see slide. 19 one more time in full size <laughs> okay i don't know what the slide is 19. i don't know which one is 19 but i'll just go uh, back uh julia if you can tell me what was on that slide do you know type it in Um, I don't know which is 19. You um, know, actually, this is good. It just allows everybody to see the slides in full okay. full view. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It was the <laughs> Prash, It was the Prashna Marga. The, yeah. Okay. This one. Yes. Yeah. So um, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, first, yeah. Chaitanya, who helped us with um, <laughs> the uh, the full screen, um, he says his moon is the is in the ninth house uh, with Jupiter aspect, and um, that, he, yeah, that itself is also because we say that in the fifth and ninth house, if you have moon and Venus, then that is a yoga for daily bhakti. Even and, in the ninth house. Yeah. He, his um his fifth house um is Libra and there's nothing in the fifth is aspected by Jupiter from the Lugna and Saturn mm. from the eighth with Rashi yeah. aspect of Moon. Yeah, and where is Venus? Um, Chaitanya, type in please. Where's your Venus? I'm not seeing the chats. You know, last time I saw chats. Oh, um. Go. It, it's in the eighth, his Venus is in the eighth house in Capricorn. Venus is in the eighth house in Capricorn. So see, Libra is uh, lauded by Venus, which is a feminine planet. And it is uh, uh, in the eighth house in Capricorn. And then Moon is in the ninth. So Venus and Moon combinations in fifth and ninth uh, is also shows a very strong Devi Bhakti. So there is a huge uh, thing of the Divine Mother on him. Uh, so uh, very huge blessing and the yoga of Divine Mother. Even just the presence of the moon in the ninth and uh, and that the fifth Lord is also Venus. Very strong, but I don't know. He can tell us whether he's attracted to the Divine Mother or has worshipped the Divine Mother at any time in any form. Okay, if he types it, he says um, Radharani and Krishna. There you go. Radharani and, is, uh, go ahead. Is, 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 yeah. We have another question about Radharani from uh, mm -hmm. Praveen, who asks, Sarbani mm -hmm. Mam, when does one worship Srimati Radharani? Is Venus highly afflicted, uh, like Guruji says in some of his classes? What are other yogas needed for one to be a worshiper of Radharani? Absolutely, absolutely. Venus, as I said, alone is not just Lakshmi, but you saw from many of the uh, texts that we saw that Venus also shows Durga. Okay, Durga and uh, the moon and Venus shows Durga. So definitely Venus and Venus afflicted will show Radharani. Definitely. If you have a Venus and Rahu combination or Venus afflicted in any way, definitely. It goes without saying. So, um, uh, what do we do about um, a, a fifth house that has four planets in it? Yeah, so you, we have to choose, Deborah, uh, which planet is strong out there. For example, you know, I did Guruji's chart, which had Jupiter and, uh, sorry, Venus and Sun. All right. Now you can say this is nice, uh, you know, in Cancer, the moon sign and all that. 
but you see venus is combust out there so venus is afflicted where surya in fifth house is very strong because you know the corner position of surya is very good and also surya is bhatri karika so, so surya is very strong and much more higher up in degrees so surya emerges as a strong planet out there and very clearly he has taken that path so we have to analyze all the grahas and when we analyze all the grahas it comes out very clearly uh, uh, you know which is a strong uh, you know form of deity okay thank you um prashant is asking how about a feminine rashi and a masculine graha yeah feminine rashi and masculine graha graha this is also like for example uh, you have to see the drishtis also on it okay you have to see drishtis on it but what we really do is that if it is a feminine sign uh, for example sun in cancer cancer is feminine actually in that point of view but surya is a masculine deity so the planet which is there in the fifth house will actually have a say if you actually have a graha sitting in the fifth house that graha is going to have number one say you know it's like in a room i always say the room is like a rashi all right and if i as a person i'm a graha i'm sitting here in this room i'm having a say i'm altering the room so always a graha placed in a bhava will have number one say in all matters we will always take that graha goes without say then you know what sign he is in what planets are aspecting him can then uh, you know fine tune us help us fine tune on the exact form of the deity you know we can go further in any and in if you want to but the graha over there will indicate very strongly without doubt okay thank you um inga is asking um sarbani ji how about planets in the fifth house exalted or an own sign but malefic by nature um something like if you have a mars exalted in the fifth house see there we can tap in because we know exalted planets have the energy of a vishnu avatar so if i have a mars exalted in the fifth house or a saturn exalted in the fifth house if i then do the avatar mantra then i am addressing the graha at that high level all right i am addressing the graha at that high level so i'm not allowing the maleficence of the graha to come in if mangal is there it is says for example saturn is there exalted and i am going to worship him as the kurma avatar om namo bhagavate apu paraya i am not seeing him as shani i am seeing him as shri kurma he will be as shri kurma in my chart and i shall need to worship him with that mantra always but if i don't do that and then i bring him down to a very base saturn level then a very graha level saturn and things will come in so that mantra can help you to sustain inga all right you you are addressing the graha at which level it is in and that will uh, retain the sacredness of that graha's condition as well as your mind it will be a very beautiful mantra for your mind similarly with mars exalted you may need to worship nrsimha deva om namo bhagavate nrsimhaya that will be very good and mars will never be negative for you because nrsimha devata will always be by your side so an exalted graha will show a vishnu avatar whereas if they are an own sign like for example a saturn in makara in the fifth house own sign is tattva level then we need to worship shiva or shiva rupas over there so then they are not near grahas they have gone into the devata levels okay does that answer your question i i think that does answer inga's question um yes she says yes thank you and uh one more um before we thank you and let you go um sarbani ma'am what combinations lead one to be able to attain one's ishta devata at the end of life what yogas in the d9 do we need to have from the karakamsha for example that is a, a totally That's a different big question. topic whether it is not related to our topic so ishta devata is not necessarily related to the fifth house of your rashi chart it can be 
it can be and it can usually be so your what your bhakti is if, if a graha is showing a very strong bhakti marga then that bhakti marga will eventually help you towards your moksha path many times the ishta devata graha also is over there and is connected with it all right many times it is that but even if it isn't okay in guruji start i showed the mercury is there in the fifth from karaka chart from karaka asha in guruji's horoscope which shows krishna right which shows jagannath it is in the sign leo which is lorded by surya again so the bhakti of shiva will lead you to that the bhakti your path bhakti marga will be that okay but what you are saying the analysis for ninth house that's a separate thing altogether we are not uh, uh, handling that out here right now so uh, going into the depth of that is a different question altogether who was that question from uh, there was Deborah? there was from praveen okay uh, shanmugam yes praveen you will learn that later next year yes oh, okay well um i i would say um thank you from everybody and we can carry on some conversations in uh in the telegram group as uh sarbani ji's uh, time allows okay sure absolutely oh well let's see no i i think well i think we're good okay thank you thank you so much sarbani okay thank you deborah and thank you everybody bye thank you bye